right, so what I'm going to do here is just show a little breakdown of how I would lay out a, a pinup or whatnot. And um, I can always use new content um, for my 94 comic book series. So I'm going to do a Rage Tality piece. Um, yeah, so this is just top of my head. Uh, I don't have any uh, real purpose for it. I'm going to use it for something at some point, though. All right, so um, the way that it worked is an 11 by 17 board. Um, kind of guesstimate about you know where the trim is going to be, probably about a quarter inch or so. Um, this pencil might be too light. So that's about the area where the safe area is going to end. Um, sometimes on panel work, it's going to be within this amount of area of an original. And that would be for text. Um, artwork, you can... It's comics. There's there's there's, uh, there's general guides, um, and they're all meant to be broken. The text rule, though, you don't want to break. Uh, last thing you really need is to have word balloons going off the paper, um, getting trimmed off, and you know that's <laughs> then people will have to guess what's going on. Um, it's an eyesore. So anyhow. Um, Go kind of old school the way I used to. I used to work in shapes, so um, I'll, I'll just start with like a triangle, I guess, and kind of see. So I'm gonna just sort of uh, I'll break this piece up to a to a triangle, but I'm gonna have it um, kind of off center. So we'll just kind of run like this. So <clears throat> I already know that I want the focal point to kind of flow um, in this direction, similar to to a, a sequential page in a way. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to help that with character placement, limb placement, shadows. And the list goes on. Um, but I'm not really going to focus on that right now since this is just a pinup piece. So I um, had a general idea of just uh, a rage maybe just getting absolutely destroyed. So <laughs> That is one of the, the things that I do in the book a lot, is he, he tends to uh, not really come out on top in a lot of situations. Actually, most situations, that's that's almost the premise of the book. All right, so um, like most artists, I usually start with kind of where, where the head would be. Um, and then the size of it kind of delegates the size of the body that you go. Um, like most comic artists, I, I probably go like nine on male characters. I probably go like nine heads high, not realistic proportions. Um, I didn't choose comics as a medium because I liked drawing realistically. There are artists who do. It's just, it's, I, I prefer the fantasy side. I, I like the, the super exaggerated poses and, um, just creates a more fun experience as an artist too, I think. Um, so I'll probably bring in his torso right here. Uh, this is probably very common for most artists. You kind of work out like where the rib cage, um, the center line of where you want the character, um, the hips. I kind of build, I kind of build my characters um, almost like action figures or like a transformer toy where you can see the joints, you can see the hips, you can see the shoulders. Um, you know, although there were a lot of toys in the, in the, in the eighties, which were not articulated very well. And I think that's why franchises like, you know, GI Joe and transformers did so well is because they were up against you know figure lines like even the star wars um the original star wars figures were very you know stiff and they went one direction and then you had uh the joes which you know twist at the hip all of a sudden because he used the rubber band inside and you know they had elbows they could like point their gun more than just straight so i'm kind of a product of both if I draw something that looks super stiff, I'm going to blame it on the 80s. All right, 
right, so yeah, I'm already I'm already pretty much committed to this. Um, now, if I didn't like this and I was like, oh, I want to see the entire leg here, right? Like not bent, what whatnot. All this stuff would have to get shrunk. This would come down about this size. The head would probably be shrunk about a half. Um, so that's one thing to consider when you're when you're working on stuff, um, especially like I was showing, you know, starting on the head. Um, once you commit to that size, everything else kind of conforms to it. You can play with it and adjust it as well when you um you gotta have like some extreme angle some some uh perspective you know play with perspective a lot um you can have like a, a bird's eye view and the feet are very tiny because of how far away um you push that that uh, camera angle the camera of your mind I think that's really the only time that I will use uh, photograph reference is when it, it's something that I can't really um, imagine. And like the idea, so the concept I have behind this, there was actually a um, a cover that um, that Dan Friga actually had illustrated a ways back on. I think it was Blood Strike, but he did one where he was just he was tore up, and it was a very it was it was a pretty cool piece. Um, For just showing how like obliterated a character could look and look very cool at the same time. All right, and so um, I'm not really sure about where I'm kind of going with this with the forearm. So I, I do know that I want an insane weapon, but I want it to have some weight to it. So I'm gonna have it pointing down, not being used. So I might just create a, an area here where the wrist is kind of flipped. Um, this is how I do most of my most of my own personal stuff. I don't really I'm not a I'm not a huge fan of the uh, the layout process. Um, I will do thumbnails and things like that, but I, I don't necessarily uh, feel that the energy stays when I you know, work in the, in the way that I used to work, which was I would do these, uh, these itty bitty thumbnails and then, um, you know, show, oh, this character is punching this character and, you know, whatever. Um, and then, you know, I'll blow that up and do a, like a light box trace of that. And it just, became a little tedious there was things like in the thumbnails even I would notice that I liked and I wasn't I didn't really feel like I could capture them and I, I kind of figured out with this stuff um, there's a lot more kind of kind of ad-libbing that happens in the sketching side that you can only really get the first time around and so um, and that that might just be a me thing there might there might be other people who completely work the other way because they have the opposite um, experience but that's my experience for my own stuff so I always kind of cringe when I um, have clients or <laughs> they're, they're like oh can you send me some thumbnails first and I'm like yes I can <laughs> but it's not my uh, I kind of already know what's going to happen on on the creation side of what what occurs with me personally on it. Um, yeah, so. I'm just kind of laying out his little headgear here. Yeah, 
so yeah this recording I'm just gonna do a little bit of the layout and um, uh, maybe some rough pencils and then and then call it um, might do a separate an actual stream for the for the inking um, side of that Done a uh, a live show, not a podcast, just just a stream. I've done a stream with somebody, and um, they were just kind of talking about how like I have just this ridiculousness with this Rage Tality character from the '94 books um, that I put out, and I was like, yeah, it's really just it's my way of kind of. Um, continuing <laughs> to draw the stuff that I like even though a lot of it's been sort of uh, overlooked or, or um, kind of pulled from mainstream and uh, that's one of the cool things about indie books you know like when you're you're your own boss you're doing your own thing um, you just kind of do just do it don't try to like I'm not doing I'm not creating and illustrating my own book to try to make a Marvel book. Um, I want to do it my way. Um, I, I want it to be professional looking, you know, obviously, but, um, you know, I'm not checking off any boxes with anything that I create. It's, it's all just what I feel like I want my book to do, um, what I want it to, um, kind of represent with myself um, and I like seeing other people's iterations of my characters and all that too it's funny to see sometimes they'll, they'll they would do like a rage piece rage tality um, they do a piece of him and it'd be very much like something you would see um, like on a Deadpool cover you know things like that and and I think that's cool um, but also it's just it's kind of silly to see um, you know it's like uh, if I created a character who flies um, you know there's a very a very like basic kind of you know you already know you're probably gonna get a um, Superman-esque pose um, I always find it interesting though like when you get something completely different you know um, rage tality eating a pot pie <laughs> you know I mean, that kind of stuff is cool too and that's that's the stuff that um, the stuff that breaks the mold is always the the coolest not that everything should it's just it, it is nice when you get stuff that's a little different thinking with this weapon I, I always go um, I usually just you, with him I'll, I'll usually just play with uh, play with swords like a, just holding two or three in one hand at once and the other hand has two or you know gun you know popping off um, This is the other thing too. This is a one-off, so this gun is not like canon to anything. Anything regarding the book or the story, so I'll probably go nuts with these.
that's something else that I used to do. So you'll notice I'm I got pretty decent, um, you know, lines that run about, you know, probably four inches max, three and a half inches. I can get them pretty straight, and um, I think it just comes from lots and lots of practice of trying to draw straight lines. Um, not being too too critical of myself when they weren't so um, something I learned many years ago um, I would I would bother I would bug I would bug uh, Stephen Platt quite a bit back in the day the extreme days and so um, he was always in there at really weird hours but um, when he was when he wasn't, it was usually Marlowe inking his pages and stuff in there. Um, they both shared an office for a bit. And um, I would just kind of go in there and just kind of pick his brain. And um, he, had, he had this thing. I don't know that he really practiced it as much as preached it. Um, but he would tell me, never draw a straight line. Uh, he, had this, he had this idea that... Um, everything should kind of have a global cast shadow, even if it was a flat object. Um, especially, you could tell with the muscles, all of his cross hatching um, was always curved, and I think that was the big, the biggest um, failure of a lot of the Marvel and DC artists who were trying to clone the extreme look. Even though, well, they, it was the Wildstorm look too. They, pretty much anything image, they were trying to retain that fire of all that you know all the creators who had left them um, through a lot of these uh, old school artists who weren't um, they weren't well versed in, in you know like crazy anatomy and dynamic shots and stuff like that in the same way um, that the image guys were so all the image creators so um, they would come in and they would say oh um, all Liefeld does is he does these, he does a bunch of lines at the bottom of the lake. So they were all doing that, right? And really, like if you look at it, that's not what he was doing. He was he was coming in and, um, uh, you know, creating curvature. He wasn't coming in and doing straight, 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 straight. He was coming in and everything was curved. And then by the bottom of it, you had, you know, like these, these uh, almost like Scott Williams would do it a lot, but where you'd have like the gradient within the curve and, and the thick to the thin was still present as well as it got darker and tighter lines and thicker lines. And they weren't doing that. They're coming in with the straight edge and just hitting it, you know? And, <laughs> um, you know, I think that's why, that I think that's why a lot of, there was a lot of promising artists doing that. Um, but I, I really think that was kind of what didn't register with, because re reader, reader's eyes will tell them if something looks wrong. Um, or kind of against the grain of you know what they're what they're purchasing on a regular basis. So yeah, I'm thinking like this. I might just give them a little clock up here. I don't know. This is always a tough one for me. Um, figuring out how how high or to bring it forward I'll just probably just bring it here. yeah this is much darker at least from what I'm seeing here this is much darker on the paper than it is um, actually showing. I'm using a non-photo blue pencil. Um, I have hundreds of them. And some of these are older than than uh, the rest. Like I know this is the old Kohler Ice Prisma and then I have the original non the original copy knots. Um, at some point Prisma Color purchased uh, either the branding or the company that was making the non-photo materials 
Um, and I think that was in the, in the 90s. But I've, I've been buying them in bulk for so long that every once in a while I'll come across um, an old pencil and, you know, I'm like, this pencil's got to be 30, you know, 30 years old and it's still doing its job. There was a point I remember um, I had friends that I'd play baseball with and uh, um, artist buddies and stuff back in high school and that and um, we would we would hit we would hit up uh, the same art the same art stores and things and there was a I, I do remember there was a rumor about. It was something about the non foil blues being like being discontinued or something, and I think that kind of like put the fear in some of us because we were just like just getting the grasp of um, what materials are used for drawing comics and um, the other uses. I mean, these pencils weren't created just for you know they were like a, a drafting supply. So um, you know, as soon as you hear the sky is falling. <laughs> you know you're like well i'm gonna unload all this money into this store and pre-order 300 of these things and it'll get me through until you know it's pretty much the uh the pencil version of the uh toilet paper crisis of 2020 right and we were all guilty of it but the nice thing is I haven't had to I haven't had to purchase a non photo blue pencil in uh, two decades. So I I can't say the same about toilet paper though. Yeah, so I think that works pretty well. I some um one of my one of my weak points is foreshortening for some reason foreshortening arms I either get it the first time or or I just fight it and I'm like you know what this elbow is in the wrong place oh wait now that whole that whole uh, you know that whole muscle is, is drawn incorrectly it's not um, you know it's not reflecting what's going on here with here um, but I'm happy this I think this looks okay for what it is So apologies to Frega. I'm gonna do it, dude. I'm gonna I'm I'm doing this. He's getting He's getting the steak treatment. So another trick that um, just because of the, the way your eyes will work as the artist um, creating a piece, um, several times through drawing something, you should, you should, uh, I didn't, I didn't practice this a lot um, as much as I should, but flip your drawing upside down. Um, and the way, the way that I was taught is that when you flip an image upside down um, as a creator of it, you're going to see what other people are going to see. So um, if you if your eyes that you drew are all, you know, they're all wonky and stuff, then you're going to catch that when it's upside down, not necessarily when it's when it's right, you know, when it's right side up as the artist. And um, a lot of times that's why artists will actually argue. They're like, no, 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 that that was drawn fine. 
like I don't know what I don't know what these people are complaining about um, if they would take the time to just flip the image just flip your whole sheet flip it upside down and and kind of take you got to take a step back and look at it you know um, you'll see you'll see and you'll catch it and can avoid some some redos and mishaps you know um, that was another one that we would do in uh, I've, I've worked several years in gaming industry and doing uh, portrait paints and stuff like that for like in 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 game live portraits and uh, that was a big one is uh, you know flipping your canvas um, you can get a similar I feel like you I feel like you get a better understanding if you do flip it uh, 180 though I feel like you get a, a little bit more of a, a, a fresh eye approach to what you've been actually doing. So I was immediately catching how off that leg looked with that foreshortening when I flipped it. I, I didn't see it when I was working on it. That's why I'm bringing this up. Um, another trick you can do if you're working on something, it could be anything, um, you know, even painting cars, whatever. Um, uh, your your use your phone, take a picture of it, um, and then kind of you know give it a timeout and then take a peek at it, and you'll and you'll probably catch you know what's lacking or you it might actually enhance. You know, you're like, wow, that's actually a lot better than I thought um, it was going. Um, so that's a good, it's a good tool to use as well. There's times where I've done sketch covers and stuff and, you know, I post like an, I post like an Instagram photo or whatnot and then I see the picture posted and I didn't catch it. You know, I'll see it like a month later and I look and I'm like, <laughs> man, that face needs some work. Like I didn't, I didn't see it in, you know, in the beginning but it happens you know art is subjective um you know fortunately most artists are given a pass for the thousands of errors that we put on paper Another tool I use, I use this uh, microfiber claws. I use, <laughs> I use these for eraser dust, of all things. I used to keep them just for my the Cintiq and the computer that you see back here. And I figured out, um, I'm like, oh, these are far more useful on a page. I can work with a filthy computer. I can't work with paper with the eraser dust all over the piece. happy with this this little layout here um, yeah and I don't do any I don't do any heavy lifting in this this is literally just me um, just scribbling just scribbling um, and the reason why I don't want to become I don't want to become too attached or, or you know married to any of these lines um, because because what happens is it becomes painful to have to separate from them when you're having to erase an entire leg or you know things like that so um, when you're laying stuff out, um, I suggest keeping it loose because um, there's nothing worse than trying to work something in that you feel like you just completely got correct into a composition that doesn't work the way that that one piece is throwing it off, if that makes sense. So uh, sometimes you're better off just 
redoing it. and all that. It's been a while since I've used um, like black black splatter, you know, where you get the, the black ink and you're working it over a spot um, with the grit. And so I'm thinking already this is going to be a piece which will feature that just because um, I did a little bit of it for the... Uh, the blood, the the spackle and spray on that um, that replicator cover when I inked it, I, I came in and, and hit it. I tried not to go too, try not to go too hardcore on it, um, but enough where it's visible. Um, and I think it definitely um, gave it a little bit of an edge, an edginess. That's about where that's at. And apologies if you don't, if you can't see this very well. Um, sometimes, so I have I have a monitor right here in front of me, and I can see, I can see uh, all of my recording right here in front of me, um, just so I'm not getting whiplash from looking over here. And I do notice that after uploading uh, that last video, um, stuff looked darker. So I kind of figured this this one would be okay um, and if not no biggie all things are small things Probably just gonna so typical. I'm gonna <laughs> I'll draw out some uh, some tech villains down here that he's taken out because you don't just walk around with you know 20 swords sticking out of you, right? Like someone someone did that. Somebody did that to you, unless you're in in the circus doing it to yourself. Just it's not normal. So I'll just sort of create a couple characters look like there's something straight out of apple seed. Those were always my favorite. Um, the ones with like they don't fly but they got the wings sticking out the back and all that they just they have a very strong um, like a silhouette contour look to them
because I spend so much time um, in my office here working, coloring, drawing, uh, inking, whatever it is, I don't have a whole lot of time to um, play games, like you know, video games and all that. So I will usually, um, I didn't even know, I can, somehow I, I missed it. Um, I'm a really big Warriors fan of the film and I did uh, I did play through and, and unlock everything in the original uh, the Warriors video game on the PS2 but I had seen that there's a a complete walkthrough of the PS4 and then the same the same poster put up a uh, you know all the I guess there's flashback there's a lot more stuff in the PS4 and um, so I contemplated and I'm like I, I don't have time as much as I would like to. So I'll just watch someone else beat the whole game, be happy with it. So this, I had um, conceptualized when I was creating this character, this Rage Tality character from the 94 uh, comic book series, I was, I had a little bit of a criteria when I was like doing sketches. And pretty much um, my two criteria was a uh, cool mask, cool face mask, the, something that looked dynamic to me, and metal arms, just because I really like the look of like the banding, um, crazy unrealistic um, yet very cool looking metal metallic arms I'm a big fan of that like the Colossus and and Colossus is my uh, favorite X-Men uh, universe character so makes sense makes sense When I go into the uh, actual doing the line art process, I'm gonna go off and get him. Super gritty. So, all right, that's it for that. And, uh, yeah, I'll decide. I'm I'm definitely gonna post the inks. Um, not entirely sure if I'll do the video for the inks, so so.